Hello everyone, welcome. We're live. It's Phil here in the Digital DJ Tip Studio with Thursday Q&A. This is our hour, usually, it goes on for an hour, where I just help you with your DJing issues, your DJing challenges, your DJing problems, and we just talk DJing for an hour. This is what we do for free once a week on YouTube, Facebook, on our Twitch channel, on our Mixcloud Live channel, uh, and uh, it's basically our way of touching base with you guys and girls out there in the community. So for those of you that don't know us, we're Digital DJ Tips. We're the people behind that book you can see there behind me, uh, to the right of that DJ controller, uh, Rock the Dance Floor. We're also behind the 25 Count and DJ courses with more than 27,000 students now. It leapt up over the uh, Black Friday, Cyber Monday period. Uh, so uh, we are one of the leading schools out there for teaching DJ. Uh, this is something we do for free though, every week, uh, and I enjoy it very much. So I'm here for you. That's my job for the next hour, just to help you with your DJing issues, your DJing problems, and to help you move forward. So hello to Mixmaster G, nearly always the first nowadays there in Holland. GM and Martin, who's saying, uh, Nigel actually is saying, I'm filling in the survey. We are launching a special prize draw and DJ census next week. Now this is, a, oh, we do this annually. It's your chance to have your say about the DJ world, and this has been a very strange year for DJing, of course, but we also have a prize draw attached to it. Now this year, the prize draw has got a $35,000 prize fund, including the chance to win a top of the range Pioneer CDJ 3000 system. It's an amazing prize draw. Now this launches officially next week. Our students are in there early, uh, with, an, with the ability to, uh, to to complete this ahead of everyone else because that's what we do for our students. Uh, so if you're not a student, next week you get a chance to fill in the, the, the annual DJ, global DJ census and also enter that prize draw. So that's what Nigel is up to right now. Uh, hi to Timothy over there in the States. Hi to Brian. Uh, hi to Fred. Uh, to Rich Modisco. Uh, Brian says, I was second on Facebook again. It happens, Brian, it happens. Uh, it's uh, great to have you here, DJ99 and all of our other regulars as well, uh, and everyone else who's popping up and just saying hello. So uh, the point here though is to answer your questions about your DJing. So I'm scrolling down for questions and they will be what I feature more than anything. However, I do want to give a big shout out to Ben, our, our community manager, who was also our DJ at the weekend on our live stream and Papa D says hi Phil chilly here in Miami big ups to Ben on his in my shed live stream he DJed live from his garden shed which when you're in the north of England in, in winter is quite a brave thing to do and he did that last week so uh, you can watch the replay of that on our YouTube channel uh, he was very nervous but I think he did quite a good job of it uh, hello to everyone else who's just I can't I haven't got time to read read out all these hellos, but uh, it's great to have so many of you here. So it's about your questions. So please ask questions and I'm here to help. Uh, we've got uh, the gear set up is the Prime 4, uh, sorry, the Prime 2 from Den and DJ. So if you've got any questions about that, I can help with that. Uh, we can uh, also pull out any other gear to chat about that you want. We've got most stuff here. And also your questions maybe about your music or your uh, live streaming or playing out if you're lucky enough to play out, promoting yourself, whatever it is, I'm here to help. So our first question is with, Z with Vic, who says, Hi Phil, I have a streaming gig post Christmas with friends and family. Is it possible to use Zoom so as to interact with the stream or should I stick to a dedicated stream and get comments back? Well, it can be a lot of fun live streaming on Zoom, especially if it's just friends and family. So it could be worth doing that. You'll have to tell your family to mute though and then get use the chat box anyway for your, for your live feedback on the stream. Yeah, and also audio quality can be dodgy on Zoom. It's quite hard to get it right because it's, it's made for voice and there aren't some of the features that you would like to see to make the audio better. But yes, Zoom is a, is a good choice for friends and family or you could just stream it on YouTube, keep it unlisted and uh, give your friends and family the link. Uh, but give it a test run on Zoom and see how you get on. We do have an article on, uh, on how to DJ on Zoom. Now the trouble with DJing on Zoom is that things change all the time. And this was made, it was made only six months ago, uh, but guess what, in six months, a lot can change. Uh, however, I will share that article with you now. Uh, it is here, just to drop it on the screen for you. How to DJ Zoom Party, seven tips for awesome live streams. Uh, and if you go to Digital DJ Tips, uh, click the search box at the top of the Digital DJ Tips website there uh, and type in DJ Zoom Parties, you will come up with this article. So this should help you get started uh, on DJing on Zoom. Yeah, a lot of people do this at Christmas and 
I thoroughly recommend it. I had a, uh, my brother was 40 uh, in the week and we had a Zoom party for him. Uh, it wasn't uh, a DJ party or anything, but it was a lot of fun. So um, Zoom is definitely the way forward, as we all know, in these strange times. Good luck with that. Any more questions about that, let us know, Vic. Uh, so Philip says, my question is, uh, what's the difference between the Pioneer XDJ RX and the XDJ RX2? And does the XDJ RX2 have all the effects like the DDJ1000 has, as I'm used to having the DDJ1000? So basically, the uh, DDJ RX2 replaced the DDJ RX. So you don't want to buy the RX now. Buy the RX2. It's got a, it's got um, eight pads instead of out from memory. It's got eight pads instead of four, uh, which the XDJ RR. The current uh, kind of lower end one has only got four pads, but it's got eight pads. Now the effects, the effects are, are good. You get the one effect stripped. I'll show you the, I'll show you it on the screen. So this is uh, what it looks like. Uh, oh, no, that's a picture of me. Look, hey, hello everyone. It's Phil here. Uh, this is the one I wanted to show you. Uh, so it's, um, the effect strip is the bit I'm showing you now on the, uh, on the little plus sign here. And that's reasonably well featured. You've got like eight effects there. I think you get more than that on the DDJ-1000, but you've certainly got enough to be going on with on the, uh, on the XDJ RX2, uh, but it's not exactly the same as the DDJ-1000, I don't think. I haven't got a 1000 here to double check that for you. I have got a, um, I have got a DDJ-1000 SRT though, so uh, that's why I've got this camera set up here, you know, so I can show you controllers. Whoa! So here's the DDJ-1000 SRT. And this has got the control strip here. And you can see that it's got more, probably it's got about 15 different effects there. So the effects is definitely more well featured on the DDJ-1000 and the 1000 SRT than on the uh, RX-2. However, on the RX-2, you don't need to use a laptop, right? Which does make it a hell of a lot more useful if you're, that's the reason you're buying it. And so for that reason, you're getting slightly less uh, of the functionality you get on the, on the 1000 in order to keep the price of that one low. I'll go back to the other camera now. So, so yeah, a bit of a trade off there. Uh, you might want to, you might want to wait until they release a, a follow up to that because of course this controller here blew the uh, Pioneer standalones out of the water, this system here. Uh, this one from Denon has got a lot more on it than the uh, Pioneers. And so uh, you might want to wait until 2021 when they upgrade. I would imagine they'll be upgrading those to have a bit more stuff on them. Uh, and you might find that, that uh, that's a bit more uh, up with the 1000 that you're used to. Uh, it's all conjecture. I've got no idea uh, as, to, as to what's coming from Pioneer in 2021. Paul just says, Ben was good on Sunday. Thank you for uh, that. I'll pass all this stuff on to Ben. Uh, DJ Lethal says, I'm having issues with my Roland controller, Phil. You're going to need to give me more than that to go on. Uh, so uh, Joyce says, my Denon Prime just arrived today after two year long wait. Wow. I presumably you were saving money for some of that time. Uh, but uh, great. Good to hear that. If you just joined us, this is Digital DJ Tips. It's our Thursday Q&A. Ask any questions you want on Facebook, Twitch, YouTube, Mixcloud Live, and you can watch the recording of this afterwards if you've missed anything. Please, if you hear a question here that is something you wanted to know, click share. If you enjoy this, click share. If I answer one of your questions, click share. That's all we need you to do. Just share this if it's possible on your platform, of course. Uh, and if you want to make sure you always see these live, do subscribe as well, and then you'll get those notifications when we uh, when we go live. So Herb says, can anyone tell us if the new Pioneer DDJ, oh sorry, that's um, not Herb's question, that's Philip's again. Uh, can anyone tell us if the new Pioneer DDJ FLX6 is class compliant? Haven't tested that, I'm afraid. Uh, DJ Pepper just says, hello. Uh, DJ Pepper is in Burbank, California, right next to Mickey Mouse. So you're near to Anaheim, right, DJ Pepper? I'm not going to Anaheim for NAM this year, and I can't say I'm gonna miss it. Um, in a month's time because, uh, because of COVID and stuff. It'd be nice to have a year off, first time in eight years. Um, so Sort of Trick says, what's the most important skill to mix? Uh, what should I practice the most? So the most important thing to get right is your timing. So all tracks are based around chunks of four, eight or 16 bars. A bar of music is simply a one, two, three, four. And the most important thing to do is when you're mixing, make sure that the track you're mixing in you're starting it at the beginning of a section 
of four, eight or 16 bars. Now you know you're at the beginning of a section because something happens, an element arrives, like a bass line or a vocal or a, a melody or a, a, a more drums, or something goes away, like the drums stop and it's a, it's a quieter bit. But some, the big things tend to happen on those the, where the sections of four, eight or 16 bars join. And a bar, remember, is four beats, one, two, three, four. So you wanna make sure that the next track you're mixing in is one, it's at the beginning of a section, as I just said, and the track you're mixing it over is at the beginning of a section as well. In other words, if you imagine a track is made up of chunks of, let's just stick for simplicity's sake, chunks of four bars, and a bar is four beats. So you could count four bars by going one, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, four, two, three, four, and then you go back to one, two, three, four. It's an easy way of counting them. When the one track is at the beginning of a one, a one, two, three, four, before the two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, four, two, three, four bits, the track you're mixing over it should also be at that point in the track. Now, you can get these tracks in sync easily using the sync button, so you don't need to worry about that when you're practicing anymore. But so, once you've lined those bits up, the only other important thing is to make sure there's not too much going on in each song so that it sounds messy. And a good rule of thumb for a beginner is if there's music going on in one of the tracks, make sure there's just a beat with no music in the other one. And then they'll line up nicely and you'll, you'll be able to mix between them and they should sound nice and smooth. Now, obviously, sort of trick, this is exactly the stuff that we teach as a school. We have whole courses that will teach you how to do this. So, uh, you know, in 30 seconds or in 90 seconds, uh, I can't teach you uh, I can't teach you enough to have a good go at this, but I can give you the, the, the beginnings of it. And so that is the beginnings of it, really. It's all about getting the, uh, getting the timing and counting right, because without that, you'll never sound good as a DJ. Without that, it's never gonna, it's never gonna sound great. All right, this is great fun today, really enjoying it. Um, Charlie says, I'm having trouble with Serato crates. They always move after I log out. That is something I can remember hearing once or twice from people before but not for a long time, and I'm not sure if it's uh, something I know an answer to. However, Charlie is on Facebook, so if you've had this issue uh, and you're on Facebook, go and chat to Charlie in the comments, please. It would be, or it would be great uh, for you to help him out. So the next question I've got is uh, Tafari says, I'm still having an issue with getting phrasing perfect for full and half beats, e.g. 140 BPM matching 70 BPM. Well, if you're struggling, then just um, double or half the BPM of the track that you, of one of the tracks, it doesn't matter. Uh, and if that makes it easier for you to, you know, hit your sync button or see the grids lining up, that's okay. All DJ software has got a way of um, halving or doubling the BPM. Because what happens is when you auto analyze your tracks in your DJ software, it'll guess the BPM generally correctly. But if it makes a mistake, it'll get it double or half. So like it might get a drum and bass track that should be 160. Uh, it might get that at 80, for instance. Or it might get a, um, a really chill, you know, a really chilled out track and, and accidentally it will think that is uh, 150 BPM instead of 75. So uh, you, whether it's guessed it wrong and you need to correct it, in which case there's always a button for double or half, or you wanna mix a 140 into a 70. And as you say, you're struggling, maybe the beat grids don't feel right just double the BPM of one of them, because it doesn't matter. You know, your, your software will generally treat those in the same way. Uh, it looks like our website's currently down. I'm just going to ask my team uh, if they can investigate that, uh, because uh, we don't like to see our website down. And the reason was I wanted to show you something on the website and it wouldn't load for me. It might just be me. Uh, but anyway, so, uh, so there's a new feature on the Rain 70 and 72 mixes called a scratch bank. This is a Rain 70 mixer, and this is uh, a scratch mixer designed for scratch DJs. And there is a feature on the new Pioneer DJ MS11 mixer, which is called a scratch bank, which is really, really cool. And what that does is lets you have samples on the pads, and then you can tap the pad and it'll load it onto the deck. And then you can scratch with the sample, and then by pressing shift in any of the pads again, it'll take the sample off again. So that gives you a really quick way of having all your favorite scratch sounds on the pads, and there's, the pads can be cycled, so you can have 32 on each deck, and quickly load your favorite scratch sound, scratch, and then get back to the track that was playing on that deck. A really nice combination of scratching and samples. And it's been launched on the DJM S11, and actually on the Pioneer DJM FLX, uh, sorry, DDJ FLX or Flex 6 as well but it wasn't on anything else. Well, now it's on the rain gear. Yes, it works brilliantly on the rain gear. Uh, so uh, good news for you there. AM's discos. 
Uh, big thumbs up for Zoom from Rajesh, who says Zoom is fun. I did a Zoom over Thanksgiving and I had a blast. Is anyone else having problems with USB with FAT32 on Rekordbox 6? I have heard a few people talking about this, John. Uh, John is over on YouTube, so if you've got any advice for John, maybe go and help him out in the comments there. Yes, I have heard a little bit of this uh, today. I'm not really, well, literally today I was reading someone else talking about it, and I don't know why. Um, so if anyone can throw any light on that, the comments over in YouTube is the place. Let's keep moving. Absolutely loving this today. Brilliant questions as usual from everyone. Uh, this next question is from Weasel22, who says, what's the best way to promote yourself if you're new to adding videos on YouTube? Well, this is a big question, Weasel22. The best way of promoting yourself uh, in any way is to link all your channels up to start with. So if you're on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, wherever you are, make sure that each channel has got a link to something else. Or even better, just have a one page website with all your social links on it and then you can send people back to there as well. So you're linking people together. Publicize what you're doing across channels. Uh, re re respond to everyone who watches your video. Reply to every comment and um, be consistent. Do stuff. If you're going to do uh, you want a music YouTube channel, for instance, do it like once a week if that's what you can do or three times a week or whatever. People who are consistent get the most traction. So there's a few ideas there for, for doing that. Uh, we've got a lot more in our uh, live streaming course, of course. We've got a, a course on live streaming. Oh, the website seems to be back up now so I can show you. Uh, we have a course on live streaming that talks you through all kinds of ways of getting that right. So if you head over to the Digital DJ Tips site, to the DJ Courses page, and go down to Essential Courses, uh, and then scroll down and you will find Individual Skills Courses, and DJ Live Streaming Made Easy is one of those. This will talk you through everything about setting up and successfully uh, performing and marketing your DJ live streams in these times when, of course, we haven't got any gigs. So uh, more info there. So Changa says, hey Phil, is there any way that a friend and I can spin back to back on the internet using our controllers? Suggestions on a device or app? Well, yes, there is. There is a device that we have here at Digital DJ Tips and so does, well, I have here, and so does Jamie, uh, Jamie, um, uh, Steve over at um, the other Digital DJ Tips studio. And we are going to link up over Christmas, hopefully, and back to back on the internet live. So that means that uh, if it works and we think it's worth telling you about, we'll tell you about. It's an experimental device from uh, an inventor uh, in the UK. Uh, so I'm gonna talk to you about that um, when we know more about it, until we've tested it. We can't, uh, you know, we can't uh, promote something we don't know whether it works and stuff yet. So we'll be, you know, as, soon as, uh, as soon as we get a chance, we'll be testing those two things. So I'm looking forward to that. Uh, the next question is from Matthew. He says, did you see the Nico Perez interview with Cleveland Terry uh, on the 2nd of December? It's positive things for Mixcloud. Yeah, we love Mixcloud. We love Cleveland Terry as well. And uh, we're supporting Mixcloud 100% here. In fact, let's go over to Mixcloud and say hello to our faithful people over there. So hi to G Funk Mix, DJ LV2D uh, as always. Uh, hello to Keith Williams, uh, who's also shared our stream over there on Mixcloud. So thank you very much for that, Keith. Yeah, we love Mixcloud. Look, it's legal. It's a legal place to do your DJing. So uh, do try and support it if you can. Oh, DJ Lethal is now telling us more about the issue with the Roland 808. DJ Lethal says the 808 is shutting down during my live stream. Do you have any ideas why? No, I don't think it's anything to do with the live stream. It's probably to do with your power supply, is all I can think of. If the actual controller itself is shutting down, it's got to be the power supply there. I, I, I'll check that power supply as the very first thing. Um, DJ Mike is offering a contrary view on Mixcloud, saying we've been hearing positive things since April. They have a lot to catch up on. Well, I guess, you know, Twitch has been there for 10 years. Mixcloud's been live streaming for seven months. So give them a bit of, uh, a bit of slack. But, um, but yeah, you know, we always want to see things develop really quickly and it can get frustrating when they don't. I'll give you that. Uh, DJ99 says, is anyone familiar with Chauvet Lighting uh, with Moving Head? Seems like there's a cheap off-name brand, or should I definitely go with Chauvet? Uh, well, I can say good things about Chauvet Lighting, the same as I can about uh, American DJ. Uh, and there are a lot of cheaper brands over there um, that you can get. Um, I would say, as always, just buyer beware. Check the the reviews and so on, and make sure you're, you're not buying something where you get no support if anything goes wrong with it and so on. If anyone wants to recommend other brands to DJ Nine Iron, DJ Nine Iron is over on YouTube. Have a chat about that in the comments. The next 
question I have is from Maya and Ace, who says, I have a crappy Chrome Chromebook that can't even run Serato and I don't have a lot of money. What laptop do you recommend for $300? $300, no idea. It's going to be secondhand, definitely. But um, it's a hard one, that. $300 is not very much money. Myron and Ace is on YouTube, so if anyone's got a $300 laptop recommendation, either help out over there or just post it in the comments wherever you are and I'll try and read it out when we get to it. Uh, Amar says, I have a question. How practical is it to DJ with just Ableton Live? I'm thinking about switching my setup to a Zone K2 and a Machina M uh, Mark III. DJing with... with Ableton Live is, is not like DJing with other DJ gear. Um, it's a very different thing. So unless you're sure, don't do it, basically. Some people do, but even those who do tend to come back to decks because they just prefer playing on decks, frankly. Uh, so what's the cost of a DDJ-1000? I think the DDJ-1000 is 1200 1300 something like that. Uh, any thoughts on Algorithm DJ Pro's new hand gesture, fe hand gesture feature that was released yesterday? Uh, has anyone seen this? There's a great video by, um, by uh, oh, I can't remember who did it. Was it Rebuke? Can't remember. Uh, anyway, there's a great video over on the uh, over on the algorithm website that shows it in use. This is the uh, software. So you basically put your hands over the camera, and it will let you scratch and control effects and so on uh, with these kind of hand gestures here. This is the news piece. Uh, that we published about it. It's Ravine, of course, it's Ravine who did the uh, video. So you can go see this video, we've linked to it on Digital DJ Tips, uh, and uh, let's have a little look at it. Let's just hit play. So look, he looks a bit silly. Find there he is. See that? You probably can't hear it. Uh, but I know you probably could hear it. Uh, so there he is doing that DJ with his hands. Uh, it's pretty cool stuff, I have to say. I'm not sure it's for me. Uh, but it's a, it's a nice new extra layer of creativity over the top of uh, DJing with the normal controls. Uh, yeah, I think it's pretty cool. Um, creative says, Hi Phil, I can pick up a DDJ SX3 for very cheap, almost new, uh, as a second backup system. Will it run without any problems on Virtual DJ? Yes, it will run fine on Virtual DJ. Don't worry about that. Pick it up. Uh, the next question is from... Uh, someone on Facebook who says, how important is it to have the latest firmware update on my Denon Prime Go? It's on 1.41, but I've never had any issues updating it. Oh, but I'm having issues updating it. It never seems to run smoothly for me. Things will change, I'm sure. Mine over matter. I think it is worth updating your firmware. There's a lot of great new stuff in the, in the maybe wait till 1.6 comes out. It's, it's due very soon, 1.6. An update then, have another go then. Uh, but it is, it is updating it. Uh, Mike says, I got a chance to play with the regular DDJ-1000. This is by far the closest thing to a Nexus setup I've seen in a controller. Really good, yeah. DDJ-1000 is a, is a, a game-changing controller for that reason. It's just so much like using the, uh, using the pro, pro gear. Uh, Philip says, what's your personal uh, KRK-5 or 6 or the e PreSonus E5? I've never tried the PreSonus E5 speakers, but I know the KRKs are good. Hi to Tiffany. Good to have you here as ever over there in Manchester. Uh, the next question is from, right, one, one thing I want to ask everyone, please don't post your question over and over again if I haven't got to it. What happens is that I'm scrolling down and I'm seeing the same thing over and over again and it stops me finding what I want to talk about. I, I, I pick the questions to make this as interesting as possible for everyone on the call. Uh, so if I've, gone over, if I've skipped over your question, I'll either get to it later or I can't get to it live, but we'll get to you afterwards. But please don't just keep cut and pasting. It's a bit antisocial to do that. It just clogs up the feed. Um, so uh, I hope you don't find that too miserable, but it really helps me if you just post your question once. Right, little gripe over. Oh, we're halfway through, so please do me a favor. If you're enjoying this, hit those likes, hit those shares, hit those follows. Do the stuff that helps us to spread this far and wide and to do this for you guys and girls for free every week. Uh, we do it for an hour for free every Thursday. All I want is a little bit of your support. That'd be great. Uh, so uh, the next question is from Liam, who says, I've got a Mixed Track Pro with uh, Virtual DJ. The issue I have is the cut effect pad on the right deck. It just doesn't cut in and out, but cuts the tune off completely. And then I have to keep pressing it and the tunes come back lower than ever. Um, do you think this is a software or hardware issue? If it's only on one deck, it's probably a software issue. But you are using a Mixtrack Pro FX. Why don't you use the Serato DJ Lite software that you can use with that as well and see if you still get the issue with that. That will kind of like narrow down whether it's the software or the hardware. So I hope that helps. Uh, Jamie, I 
I name checked you earlier uh, because I was looking at your comment when I was chatting. So uh, I, I've, I finally got to your question. And it says, all right, mate, I've got the Newmark NV2 running Serato Pro. Uh, sometimes the sound cuts off, any idea? I would say uh, get the latency set a little bit higher. So go into your Serato settings and there's a little slider. You click the audio tab and click the slider where it says buffer. Get that a bit higher. That might make your audio run more smoothly. It could just be the cable you're using from the back of the unit to the speakers. So we got to you in the end there, Jamie. Uh, so yeah, try those two things as well. Um, so uh, I wonder how it will work in the dark, dark club setting, uh, talking about this, this hand control for the um, iPad. Uh, it doesn't work very well. It's got to have light. So it's really for messing around with at home or on live streams, of course. I think that's part of the fun with this. It's on live streams as well. Some advice for Nine Iron. Uh, if it's DMX, stick to uh, branded gear. Cheap knockoffs won't give you any programming, says Stephen. We're talking about lights there. Hello, Gerthy over there in Chicago. Good to have you here, my friend. Stuart says, um, great questions and even better answers. Thanks, Phil, from Stuart. So thank you for that, Stuart. Uh, it's always good to know that we're doing the job properly. Um, so uh, Cress, Cresso says, I see you are using a switch box for your camera views there. What box do you recommend for this? You can just do it on your keyboard, you know, Here's my keyboard. If I want to switch to the overhead camera over there, as long as I know which one it is, I can go like that. That's actually the front camera. There's the overhead. So I'm just doing all this on the keyboard with, with, with shortcuts. However, I do like to use this little thing here. It's called a stream key. I've got two of them, one here and one in front of me. Uh, and this has got little pictures of what you're going to be switching to. Uh, it makes it easier for you to get that switch correct. Uh, so they're called stream, uh, they're called stream decks actually, stream deck by Elgato. Uh, so, uh, you know, I live stream a lot. They're very useful to me. You don't need them though. You can program keyboard shortcuts. That's how we used to do it before. Uh, but no problem sharing that with you. Uh, the XDJ XZ or XZ is even closer to a Nexus setup uh, with a standalone option, says Ruben. So there we go. Uh, but a lot of Pioneer gear it feels like they're pro gear now. That's the way they've gone with it. Uh, Peter says, is it possible to import playlist and rating column from Virtual DJ to Engine Prime? Mixmaster G. This person is on YouTube, go help him out. You've got some help coming to you, Peter, from someone who's written some software that can help you do exactly that. Uh, Tiffany's agreed to do a double act live on New Year's Eve. Well, that's really cool, Tiffany. I hope you enjoy your New Year's Eve. Uh, DJ Upstairs says, hi, Phil, I'm a beginner DJ here, so I'm pretty comfortable beat matching and EQ matching. What do you suggest I can do to spice up my mixes? Right, I'm gonna give you a bit of publicity here. I suggest you head over to Digital DJ Tips and immediately go to our mixing courses because we can take you to the whole next level with mixing very, very quickly. Why don't we do one of these over Christmas? So we have these courses called Mixing Cookbook. We've got them from James Hype. We've got them from Layback Luke. Uh, and we've got four of our own. The four of our own, own are Mixing Power Skills, which is a good start if you're new to power mixing. House Mixing Mastery, which is the one if you want to learn how to do really exciting house mixes. Mixing Mastery, which is if you want to do more open format style mixing. And, and open format scratch mixing if you are a scratch DJ who wants to do uh, a lot more inventive stuff that uh, is more than just scratching, that's actually scratching in DJ sets where people are dancing and so on. So we've got these four courses here that we've made and these two here. Treat yourself to one of those over Christmas because that will, especially if you understand the basics, that will take you to a whole new level DJ upstairs. So I hope that helps. Paul says, I'm finding that my laptop is struggling with CPU usage when using Traktor OBS and my Logic webcam. Any suggestions for rectifying the issue? Downgrade the... Um, well, no, first, if your CPU is, is showing 100, but everything sounds all right and is looking all right, don't worry about it. But if you're actually seeing visual issues or you've got sound issues, then you've got to worry about it. Reduce the resolution that you're, this is for live streaming, by the way, folks. OBS is live streaming software, and Paul will be trying to live stream his DJ sets and will be having problems with it. Uh, lower the resolution. If you're trying to stream at 4K or 1080, lower it to 720. Um, is, is the first re uh, thing that you can do because that will lower the amount of processor power you need. Close everything else that you don't need. Make sure there's nothing running in the background that you don't need. Uh, turn the buffer settings up higher on Traktor so that you've got, Traktor's got, um, needs less processor time to, to do its thing. If that doesn't work, you probably need a, a more powerful laptop, uh, frankly, but uh, give that a try first. Uh, any any uh, word on whether the Prime 2 will support Serato DJ Pro in 2021? No, we've got no word. It's one of the downsides of the Prime 2. We published an article on Digital DJ Tips just uh, just this week, actually, called uh, 
it was called the Den and DJ Prime 2 versus Prime 4, which is the uh, best standalone system. Uh, so this talks about these two really, really good standalones from Den and DJ and talks through the similarities between them and the differences uh, and then talks through which is likely to be the best for you. Uh, so if you're interested in this, head over there. We've even got a download there and a video about both of them. Uh, to really help you decide. But one of the things that is true is that the Prime 4 has got Serato and Prime 2 hasn't. So you need to buy Serato to use it, but nonetheless it's compatible. And we've got no idea about when that's when or if that's going to come for the Prime 2, unfortunately. Uh, so uh, can I help you on that one? I wish I could. Uh, the next question I want to pull up is from uh, Simon, who says, I'm receiving my DDJ FLX or Flex 6 next week. I'll be using it with Algorithm DJ Pro. Am I missing out not using Rekordbox or Serato? You're missing out against using it with Rekordbox because Rekordbox uses those big knobs on the DDJ Flex 6 to do those big massive effects that, uh, that it's kind of been sold on. Uh, so you'll find that on Serato and on Algorithms DJ Pro, you don't get that. Uh, and you won't get the jog cutter effects, I don't think, on Algorithm either. Apart from that, everything will work on the Algorithm software. Uh, the next question is from Nexu, who says, are there replacement crossfader parts I can get to replace the one on a DDJ 400 to make it feel more solid and smoother for practicing scratching? No, a lot of higher end DJ gear, you can swap out the crossfader for an inner fader, for example, that's a, uh, another manufacturer of crossfaders, but not on the cheaper controllers like the DDJ 400, unfortunately. You'll find that they are kind of, you're stuck with what you get on that, which is fair enough really for the money you're spending on those controllers. Uh, the next question is uh, for Vic, who says the easy answer for a beginner is to get on one of your courses. Well, yes, I know, but not everyone can afford our courses or not everyone's as committed at this point. So I do want to offer a bit of free advice as well. Another easy way, if you just want to get started and you want a lot of uh, free advice, is to get this book. Uh, you can buy it on Amazon in all good bookstores. You can get the Kindle version. You can get the Audible version if you prefer an audio book. But also you can get it for free. And to get it for free, head to that URL there and join Digital DJ Tips. When you do, I'll send you a PDF of that book for absolutely nothing. It's free to join our community. So go to djtips.co slash join and fill in your email address and I will send you a PDF of, of our best-selling book on how to DJ. Thank you, Vic, uh, for that. Uh, phrasing is important when mixing. Yeah, that's what we're talking about, isn't it, Facebook users? So thank you very much for that. Uh, some love for DJ. It is an underrated platform. It's a great platform, DJ. Uh, I like it very much. Uh, uh, okay. Um, the next question, I'm just scroll scrolling through some of the ones I looked at earlier and also some uh, new ones. Um, Jamie is giving advice to Charlie about the crates disappearing in Serato. Says you need to uh, lock your crates in the settings and then back up your library on exit. When you exit Serato, it says um, you haven't backed up your library for a while. Click here to back up. So thank you for that. Lock your crates, Jamie. Uh, I didn't know that was the solution. Mind you, my crates have never disappeared. By the way, if you accidentally delete your crates in Serato, all is not lost. There's no control Z to undo that. All is not lost. Close down Serato, head to the bin or the trash can or whatever it's called on your version of, of, of your operating system and they'll be there. Just click restore and it'll put them back to where they were. Next time you open Serato, they'll be back again. Thank me later for that one, people. Orlando, hey Phil, what do you think about the DDJ 800? I was thinking about buying it. I have the DDJ 400 at the moment and I love it. So what do you think? Oh, it's a great upgrade. It's a brilliant upgrade. You'll love it, Orlando. Definitely go for it. Uh, keep the DDJ 400 as a secondary backup controller, but you'll absolutely love that. Uh, Parag says, I want to learn DJing and I bought the new DDJ. Whoops, I want to learn DJing and I bought the new DDJ 200. I want to know, is that good to start? And if you have any courses to learn DJing, it's really good to start. Uh, and yes, the course I recommend for your DDJ 200 is the one I'm going to show you now. So head over to Digital DJ Tips, go to the courses page at the top, scroll down uh, and go to uh, Essential Courses. In Essential Courses, you want to go to the very first section, Introduction Courses, and go to DJing Made Easy. Uh, have a look at this course here. This will take you from where you are now to playing your very first party uh, easily and it will cover absolutely everything you need to do a really good job like that. So uh, that's the perfect course for you right now in your DJing journey. I uh, hope that helps you, Parag. Uh, the next question I have is from Steve who says, what time code software lets you see the track from a place, another place in the room and more softwares like Rekordbox or Serato DJ? 
I actually have no idea what you're asking there, Steve. If anyone does, go help Steve out on Facebook. Or Steve, just try and rephrase that for me a bit. My mind's a bit, a bit slow nowadays. I'm not really sure what you're asking us there. Um, but uh, we'd love to try and help you if you can clarify that. Uh, the next question is from... I'm just scrolling to find a good one. Uh, this is from... Mr. Music Mix. Now, I can't help with this, but I'm sure some of you can. Uh, Mr. Music Mix says, what is the best record pool for Latin, reggae and house? Now, I would recommend uh, Beat Source uh, as a, or uh, sorry, DJ City. Uh, DJ City is a record pool half of Beat Source. Uh, as a good pool that has a mixture of everything, including Latin music, um, dance hall and so on. Uh, so I do recommend you go to look at DJ City, but I'm sure there's others as well. So Mr. Music is on Twitch. Uh, you could go help Mr. Music out over there. Um, people not liking record box at the moment. Uh, yeah, I've heard a few people uh, people going on about uh, record box not being the best right now. I think they've got a few issues to deal with. Um, Jeff is having issues though with Beatport Link on the Denim Prime 4. 80% of the tracks have the beat, beat grid set one beat out. It's really annoying. Yeah, not much to do about that other than just quickly adjust it. I mean, it only takes a second to adjust, right? Uh, but yeah, I agree with you. That can be quite annoying. Is the... Is the S11, the DJM S11, the new scratch mixer from Pioneer DJ, uh, superior to the Rain 70, despite Rain adding the scratch bank? Right, so the interesting thing about the new Pioneer mixer is that it is a four-channel mixer disguised as a two-channel mixer, and that's pretty cool. So I'll show you what I mean. Um, I'm just trying to jump to our review now. So I keep going to the wrong picture there. Uh, this is the Pioneer DJ MS-11, uh, and what this has that no other scratch mixer has, and by the way, there's a, a video there, 12 things you need to know, you can find that on YouTube where we talk, you talked about it. Uh, what this has is screens. Now, let me scroll down to a screen and show you. So these screens here are, these, some of these features are totally unique to the Pioneer DJ unit. And what this lets you do is, and I'm gonna scroll down to it, uh, control decks three and four. So you see this picture here, what we have here is deck three, and deck four. So you have your waveforms, you can gang the decks together and control two decks as one. You can alter the BPM, uh, you can uh, pitch bend and you can play and pause. Uh, you've got wave displays um, and all other kinds of stuff over there for decks three and four as well as for decks one and two. Now this is something no other scratch mixer does. So technically, I think the DJ MS-11 has got the edge over all scratch mixers at the moment. Now, the rain mixes can be updated by firmware, so I'm sure they're working on some updates to let you do that stuff, but I think Pioneer has stolen a bit of a lead there, uh, in truth. What's a good way to go about making re-edits, mash-ups mash up and bootlegs of rock tracks, says Tyler. It's a great question. So the best way of doing this, the, the most important way, is to get the track properly beat gridded. In other words, you need to have it in your editing software, probably a Ableton, uh, so that the grid's right, so that that you can chop it up and change it and do stuff with it and anything you add or move around respects the beats because the thing with rock tracks is they're played by real drummers so the bpm is going to be a bit wavy ableton is is really really good at that if you use complex mode when you're warping in ableton which is just ableton's way of beat gridding is called warping if you use complex mode you should get a really tightly gridded version of your track and then you can run away to your heart's content with it. You know, a lot of people do some really great mashups with rock music. Uh, one course I can recommend you uh, about that, although it is mainly EDM style tunes rather than rock, is uh, Layback Loops course. Layback Loops bootlegs, mashups, and re edits. Uh, this course here is awesome for showing you the difference between bootlegs, mashups, and re edits and how to do them. And it talks you through right from the very beginning. Uh, and it nearly every, I mean, I was with Luke when we made this course. I know this course inside out. Pretty much everything in this course applies to any kind of music, certainly to rock music. So if you're interested in doing this seriously, again, maybe a little project for yourself over Christmas, go look at the Layback Luke course on our website. Uh, do you know, says DJ Unknown, why I have a five minute delay with my video when I live stream OBS? Well, it's not OBS that's causing the delay. It's a, it's a platform you're streaming to. Five minutes sounds pretty extreme. Without knowing the platform you're streaming to, I'm not sure. Five minutes sounds really extreme. Maybe there's some platforms that do that when they don't know the account or something, um, but I'm not sure about that. Uh, DJ Unknown is on YouTube if you've got an answer. I mean, our live streams are pretty good. They're 15, 20 seconds behind. Um, if I went to our Mixcloud now, uh, you could see, tell you what, let's do a little test. Let me, uh, let me clap and then we'll go over to Mixcloud and say, I'll clap now. 
Uh, and actually, that's not going to work because you're going to see the clap if you're on Mixcloud exactly when I did it. Not thinking this through, am I? But anyway, I'm looking over on Mixcloud now. I can see how long this takes for me to actually do that clappy noise. Uh, and it just happened then. So between me doing it and saying then is how long the delay is on this, uh, on this live stream. So what was that, 15 seconds? That's about right. Um, so, uh, so yeah, it's uh, five minutes seems a bit extreme. Uh, so let's uh, move on and try and grab something else here now. DJ Long G says, I'm stuck on Recordbox 5.8. I'm scared of losing my playlist if I move, move to Recordbox 6. Back up first and you should be all right. Um, or just keep waiting until you're happy. You know, you're not going to lose anything by being on 5.8, really. Um, lots of you just wanting to know where to start. I hope I've helped you with some questions, uh, some answers to the questions about that. Uh, is it worth getting the CDJ2000 Nexus or spending the extra and getting the 3000s, says Paul. Funnily enough, a friend of mine, Kevin, was literally here in this studio. He, he lives here in Gibraltar. Um, half an hour ago, he's just bought the, the 2000s and was asking if he should upgrade to the 3000s. If you're going to buy from scratch now, buy the 3000s. If you've already got the 2000s, you're not going to miss too much not upgrading them in the near future. I suspect that Pioneer will add more features to the 3000s because they can be upgraded by firmware that will make them a more compelling buy down the line. And their price might even drop a little bit. So uh, there's no rush to upgrade. But if you're going to go and buy them now off the, off the bat, you might as well buy the new ones. Um, Rich, Mo, Rich Mo says, I've got Serato DJ Pro. I find that Serato's recording is not good quality. I was recommended to purchase an iRig Pro Duo. I'm using a Rain MP2 2015 rotary mixer. Will, that, will the iRig solve issues? You need to work out why Serato is not recording properly. Serato should record an absolutely impeccable version of your mix. There's something going on in your setup that's causing that Rich Mo. You know, what you've been recommended is plugging an audio interface into the back of your mixer and plugging that into a computer and then recording on that computer your audio. That might work. If you're using DVS, that might make sense. I would still try and experiment with, experiment with Serato. There's, there's got to be a reason that's not working uh, because it should sound absolutely brilliant. Um, so, yeah, I'm not sure why that's happening, to be honest. Uh, so Rich Mo is on YouTube, if anyone can share a little bit more. Um, let's pull one or two more comments out here, one or two more questions. Uh, lots of you just, what happens towards the end of these streams is I can see you all helping each other out and it's absolutely brilliant. So top marks to everyone who's helping each other out in the comments. Stevie hasn't been helping anyone out though because Stevie's only just arrived uh, and says so better late than never. Doesn't matter Stevie. Um, so uh, <laughs> Munim says I'm Pakistani, I'm 10 years old, I'm just a kid. Please say, please say my name. Hello Munim, good to have you here. Uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, it's really good to have you on our broadcast. Uh, so and please stop posting that, Moonim. Um, so uh, the next one is uh, Dave says, can I have that Prime 4? It's actually a Prime 2. It's not ours. It belongs to, to, uh, belongs to Den and DJ. Uh, we've just got it on here. We've got it here on loan. Uh, so sorry, not, my, not mine to give away. Uh, Craig says, why did Pioneer get rid of the 4-beat loop button on the DDJ800? It was a good button on the 1000. Is there a way to map it? Uh, no, it's uh, unfortunately just one of those things. You can still do it with shift, right? But um, if, from memory, but it's just one of those things. Uh, the buttons have got to be chosen to do one thing or another, haven't they? Um, Weasel went to a pawn shop that checks and guarantees all laptops and Weasel got an HP touchscreen for 125. We've got to tell you that with DJing laptops, you need a few things. You need a really good SSD hard drive uh, that's nice and fast and that's as big as you can afford. You need a lot of memory. I'd go for 16 gigabytes if you can. Uh, you need it to be durable so because you're going to be DJing out and about with it. You're not just going to be using it at home where you can be careful with it. You need a nice big screen so you're not straining your eyes to look at the screen. has to be Intel because AMD doesn't tend to work well with DJ software. You know, when you start adding these things up, you're not going to get a great laptop for $125 in my view. Uh, and if you are, you, you're very, very lucky. So just be careful because DJing is quite processor intensive uh, and you want something that's also durable. That's the only, uh, that is the only, uh, you know, bit of advice I can give you there. Um, but that said, you might get lucky, but uh, just be careful. Go in with your eyes open. Um, I love the fact you always have the uh, prime gear there and the prime gear at home. 
Uh, I've got them both and I'm in love, uh, says uh, the live stream club. Well, it's actually only, uh, it's only recently we've had that there because I'm recording some tuition on it and stuff at the moment. Uh, and recently I switched from Serato to Prime at home where I do my live streams. Every few months I like to switch it up. I'll probably use Pioneer Gear next uh, just to keep it, uh, just to keep it fresh. But uh, you know, my job is to, is to know and like all these systems, right? Uh, lots of you are asking about the switch box for the camera. Well, I've already shown you that once, so that's cool. I hope that's helpful to you. Um, DJ Anne DuPont says, I've been putting my old CD collection ready since, in case gigs come up, I don't want to pay 200 euros for playing with a laptop for one or three gigs. Clubs have got CD players on and there's no permits and stuff needed. Yeah, you look, if you're playing in clubs that have got CD players and you've got CDs, keep using them. They won't die until clubs replace their gear with new gear that doesn't have a CD slot. Uh, but, and, and also, uh, Anne no, noted there that in some countries there's problems with playing digital music. So in other words, if you rip your CDs and play the digital version, you need an extra license, which to me is daylight robbery. But that is how it is. So you avoid that by just playing straight from the CD. Miguel says, my MacBook died, therefore I need to get a new laptop. Would you stick with Mac or would you consider Windows? Uh, any feedback about the XMG DJ15? We'll be reviewing the XMG DJ15 soon. We've got one on the way. But as far as switching from Mac to Windows, I'd say don't do it unless you've got a good reason. You know what you, you, know, what you know and you're used to what you're used to. Uh, I would stick with what I know personally if it were me. DJ Timothy Callahan says, what's a good affordable camera to use for live streaming to replace an iPhone that I use as a second camera for a controller shot? Um, look, stick with your iPhone if you've got no reason not to. iPhones are great cameras, but if you do want to switch, the cameras that we recommend and use, and uh, they are here somewhere. I'm just trying to work out where. Just trying to figure out where in the studio so I can show you. That could be them there. The webcams that we recommend and use are these. I think they're called Streamcam. They're a Logitech one. They look like that anyway. There's only one Logitech camera that looks like that. Uh, it's got a screw at the bottom so you can screw it into a tripod. Uh, they're pretty high quality. If you, uh, they were really well made, solid things, really good cables on them with a USB-C on the end. Uh, they're really good quality cameras. Uh, and you can get a lot of manual control over them with the Logitech app that goes with them. Uh, so for all those reasons, uh, we love those. They're the webcams that we recommend. And obviously with webcams, plugging them into your computer for live streaming, you don't need to worry about getting a converter from a, a normal camera to make it work with your computer and stuff. So that's what I would recommend, Timothy. Uh, the next question is, by the way, if you've just joined us, you only... Only got five minutes left now, but this is Digital DJ Tips doing our all questions hour. We do it every Thursday. You can watch the whole replay on Facebook and YouTube afterwards. Uh, so Phil says someone on Facebook, I've only got access to public Wi-Fi. Can I play with an Ethernet cable, my Prime 2 to stream music from SoundCloud? Yes, you can. No problem. Just plug it straight in and it will recognize it straight away. As long as there's internet on the Ethernet cable, of course. Uh, so can the DBJ 800 connect to my 1210s? No, you need the 1000 for that. The 800 hasn't got the two um, standalone mixer sockets that you need to do that on the back of it. Uh, is a Newmark NV2 worth buying and looking to upgrade from an Impulse 500? Mm. If I was going to upgrade from an Impulse 500, I'd take a bigger step than the NV2. I'd go to something like a Serato controller you're looking at, right? Maybe Serato DDJ SX3 or uh, DDJ 1000 SRT. I don't think it's a big enough upgrade from the Impulse 500. I'd stick with the, the 500 if it were me. Uh, Tweaking Tracks says, Digital DJ Tips has an amazing website full of resources for DJs uh, and uh, a lot of questions can be answered there. Well, thank you for pointing that out. We do have an amazing website. Maybe we don't talk about it enough. We started off as a website, you know. We were a website long before we were a YouTube channel or uh, Facebook or doing live streaming and stuff. And you can find our website here. So head to digitaldjtips.com. Here you will find reviews. We've got a massive review section that covers all the, all the DJ gear from the last 10 years. Pretty much everything is reviewed here. You can drill down and you can sort out uh, your price points and all that kind of stuff down here uh, and find out exactly, you know, I want a DJ controller for Tractor. There we go. Here's the DJ controllers for Tractors all coming to the top. It's a great, uh, a great resource that. But we've also got tutorials on gear, music techniques, playing out, promoting yourself and lots of other stuff over there. So thank you for pointing out that we've got a really cool website. Maybe I don't mention it enough. 
Uh, I appreciate that tweaking tracks. Uh, so uh, just got five minutes worth now. So I just want to uh, I want to just put out some questions that might be a little bit different to some of the ones we've answered so far. Ali says, can you suggest a quality battery operated speaker or sub that's a little less costly than the mini rig? Thanks so much for everything. I like that um, Ankar speaker that we were talking about the other day on one of our live streams. Uh, I think it's called the Micro Plus. I'll just Google it up and uh, find out for you. Um, it's actually, it was actually in our How to Choose a DJ Controller for a Kid uh, article, which uh, if you're buying for a child this Christmas, uh, or you are a kid and you want to show your parents what to buy, head over here. Uh, but it was this speaker here. We really like this speaker. I'm scrolling down to the Ankar. Anchor Soundcore Motion Plus, it's called. It's a $99 speaker, nice and loud, no latency when you plug it into your DJ gear. And uh, yeah, it's a good buy. So, you know, a lot of these speakers have latency, even when you wire them up, which makes them useless for DJing, but that one doesn't. So uh, yeah, there's a good choice there if you don't want to pay uh, for something a little bit more expensive. Uh, the next question is uh, gonna be from I'm just having a look here uh, from DJ Sinless who says, can you do some segments on DJ with additional equipment like the DJS 1000, SP16, Force, such as sample ideas, setup, and etc. Uh, thank you for the suggestions. I'll add them to the suggestions list there. Uh, you know, the problem with showing DJ techniques on individual pieces of gear that not many people have got is that not many people will find them very useful, right? So we try and do stuff that as many people will find useful as possible. But, uh, but thank you for the suggestion there. We'll see what we can do there. Uh, Tweaking Track says, can you imagine clubbers trying to wave their hands over your decks with that uh, stuff that we were looking at on uh, Algorithm? Yeah, can you imagine that? It would be crazy. Um, Dirty Joke Fan says, it's gone quiet as far as I know on the new hardware that Laidback Luke had in the background. Um, I'm just gonna show people what we were talking about there. If my, uh, here we go. So we had a video on YouTube that you can spot. It's this one here. And it's Layback Luke on his decks. And we spotted in the background, let's play this for a bit longer. I can't believe it. We can't believe it either, Luke. This is Luke's Instagram story today. There you go. See that arrow there? That is a piece of gear that is as yet unlaunched. We don't know what it is. It's a Denon piece of gear. It looks like a Denon standalone deck, but it looks like it hasn't even got a screen on it. Now look slightly here, look here, something else we noticed, there's two waveforms on this controller and that doesn't happen on Denon gear. So we think this could be a slave controller for this one as the master to give you four actual decks when you're DJing with Denon gear. And here's the waveform for it, which is why it hasn't got a screen. Absolute conjecture at the moment. We've got no word from Denon on it and we don't know whether that's gonna be launched, what it is or anything. Just our, just our thoughts. But we spotted that in a layback loop video a couple of months ago and we thought we would uh, share it with you back then. And uh, obviously some of you are remembering it. Uh, what is your opinion on the request for tips in live streams? Is it cool or could we have problems in the future? No, go for it. Uh, it's absolutely cool. Uh, I know that tips is something that uh, Mixcloud are talking about wanting to have on their platform as well. You know, DJs have had their money decimated this year. Go for it. Uh, the issue with the virtual DJ, Pete says to Liam, it might be that the virtual DJ software has a left and right deck settings different. Uh, there's usually a small tab to adjust minor settings. Have you posted on the, on the, digital, on the <laughs> digital DJ tips forum, on the virtual DJ forum? Uh, so good tip there, thank you for that. Someone on Facebook says, I've been following you for almost two years when you're doing your YouTube video. Proud of you, oh, thank you. Thank you, mom. Uh, so uh, it's good. Uh, so, um, Rave from the Grave here from David says, I loved it that Decadance supported VSTs, which, were, which are plugins for producer software, let you have a new effects and stuff. Decadance is software that's kind of fallen by the wayside recently. People, we need to go now. Uh, my hour with you is up today. I am really grateful that so many of you asked questions. I'm sorry we couldn't get to them all. A little tip, all of our students, and if you're a student, head to Student Live and once a month in Student Live, we let you know by email when it's gonna be. We have a session like this, but there's far fewer people on it because it's only for students. So if you're asking questions here and they're not getting answered, come to Student Live and we can spend more time with you there. And that's all our students. Uh, if you uh, want to become a student of ours, you can just head over to the Digital DJ Tips website 
and uh, click the courses page at the top. We've got courses in there that start at uh, reasonable prices. You don't have to buy one of the big courses, but any student that joins gets immediate access to our student hub Facebook group and also gets immediate access to student live when we do these privately. You know, we go into a lot more detail when we do these privately. We can help you a lot more. So if you enjoy this and you want to be part of that community, just buy a course. You can then have uh, once a month, you can have one of these for life uh, and come and ask your questions there. But that said, my team will get to answering as many of your questions as possible that you've asked underneath uh, on Facebook and on YouTube uh, as they can. So you know, just give us a little while and we will get to you. Uh, I just want to answer one question from Litmus G because this was over on Mixcloud. Uh, that's another tip. If you want to get your question answered, go over to Mixcloud because there's fewer questions there and I always try to answer them. Uh, Litmus G says, what is the best external recording device to record straight from the back of a DJM 900 mixer? I've had too many issues recording from the USB to laptop and also recently with the DJM Rec app, which used to work well. I just want something lower tech, but 100% reliable if something like that exists. So one tip is to get one of these. An Evermix box. It's a little audio interface that you can plug into the back of the mixer. It just plugs into your phone. The Evermix app is really, really good. It will give you a great recording straight from your phone. However, if you don't want to record straight to your phone, you can get a hardware mixer. Now, this is a Tascam one, a very, very simple Tascam one that I've had for years and years and years. And you plug a lead into here. Now, this is kind of a dual microphone and line input. So whatever you plug in there, you'll have to keep to a quite low volume. But you buy a little standalone recorder like this, and there's other ones as well by, by um, other companies. Uh, and there's more expensive ones by Tascam, but I've never needed a more expensive one than this. Uh, and it records straight to an SD card that you have plugged into the side. The SD card goes in there. And then you just plug that into your computer and take the mix off it. So these little hardware recorders, I think that's about $80, that one. It's not expensive at all. So... Uh, Hardware recorders might be the way forward or just use your laptop. Uh, right, we're done here, folks. Uh, all I've got to uh, let you know about now is the next live shows. You can catch me on Sunday at exactly this time. Look at your watch now. Whatever time it says now on your watch, that is the time I'm going live. On Sunday, uh, live streaming from my balcony. Hopefully it will be, because we're in lockdown here, uh, my, hopefully my balcony will be nice and sunny. It normally is at that time when we can watch the sun go down together. I'll play some nice chilled out house music for you. Uh, you can join me next Tuesday and Thursday, an hour earlier than what your watch says now. Uh, Tuesday will be Tuesday Tips Live, our discussion of burning issues on our, uh, in, in the DJ world for, uh, for that show. And then Thursday will be another one of these. Um, so uh, DJ Flow on Mixcloud, just one final one, says I never get emailed about Student Live. Why? I'm a student. It could be that you've opted out from our emails, DJ Flow. Um, at some point by mistake or whatever. If you opt out from our emails, you will never get um, you'll never get them again. So you have to rejoin with a different email address or from another email address, email info at digitaldjtips.com. Say, hey, I might have opted out by mistake. I don't get your emails. Uh, and then we can look into it for you. Uh, but we're very, very careful about that. If someone opts out, we will not email them, email them again. Uh, so uh, it could be that. Right, I have to go now, folks. Get good, get out there. If you can't get out there, stay safe. Make the moments and I'll see you again very soon. Till next time. Bye-bye.